Think of the immense complexity of the real world. To get any kind of ordering into it, you have to be able to congregate conceptual bags that are governed by the same kind of laws. And mathematics is exactly the language that is able to do that. The IMI, the Interdisciplinary Mathematics Institute, was founded by Ron de Vore in the late 90s. What has been kept since then as a basic, important source of conceptual input, the notion of nonlinear approximation. Right now, I think like people are really interested in the big data. For example, like those social networks, like in Facebook, uh, the Twitters, you know, all this connect people together. And uh, we provide the tools for other people to study further. We suggest a model called a random graph model for those mass graphs, and people refer to it as the Charm model. And it's named after Dr. Chang and me. I'm interested in uh, the development of advanced algorithms for accelerating large scale numerical simulation uh, for real world problems, especially uh, in fluid problems. Uh, for instance, uh, we are currently working closely with uh, uh, scientists uh, at Los Alamos National Laboratory on ocean modeling. The ocean models we are developing has uh, dramatically different spatial and temporal scales. That brings bigger challenges uh, in computation. So we developed a conservative explicit local time stepping that makes it possible to run long-term simulation on highly variable, high resolution meshes. Nonlinear approximation plays an important role in conjunction with other fields like harmonic analysis and above all numerical analysis. But a key component of it is it provides a framework where you can keep the discrete problem, which is actually transferred to the computer, in close connection with the underlying continuous model. Because that allows you to eventually exploit intrinsic problem metrics, which are lost when you, when you, when you forget about the underlying continuous model. And this is at the heart of many, many applications in diverse areas like machine learning, compressive sensing, imaging, data analysis, and seemingly very different, even in the numerical treatment of PDEs. A team of biologists and biochemists at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, asked me about work that they're doing in uh, an area known as netosis. They have mountains of microscope images of cells undergoing netosis under various kinds of experimental conditions. We decided to collaborate on developing a model to automate the process of localizing, labeling, segmenting cells in their images. It's possible to develop convolutional neural networks and other machine learning techniques, models to uh, perform image segmentation and instant segmentation, object recognition and detection in the images in order to answer their questions about which agonists cause the most netosis, what sort of phenotype changes one sees when netosis occurs, what phenotypes accompany netosis, etc. One of the big pluses in working at IMI is that uh, nearby there is a nanocenter and electron microscope. With the um, advancement in the quality of the, of the signal we have, you now are noticing the effect of the instrumentation itself on the data that you collect. And now the questions become, the changes that I see in this image, are they real to my sample or are they driven by my measurement technique? And the mathematicians have been able to help us develop a formalism where we can acquire a series of images and then register them pixel by pixel, um, allowing us to extract higher quality data from effectively very low signals and noise input data. 
One of the new problems we're working on is uh, electron dispersive uh, X-ray tomography. Uh, this is a uh, way of identifying the individual elements into the sample. We have to develop a special uh, learning theory approach to be able to extract the information and we have much better results now than the standard processing techniques. We have really profited enormously from interactions with mathematics in the sense that uh, they taught us how to carefully look at noise, model noise, understand noise and get better data that allows us then to also question our own premises with respect to imaging. The main underlying theme is to connect foundational research and theory to cutting-edge applications. In doing so, it's important to always remain open to look at things from a new angle.